brothers and sisters, I see our ministers here. I don't want to prolong the time. Let's bring him up with a warm round of applause. He's a, a working man for the nation of Islam. Been doing it for quite a long time. And he's a young man. Yes, sir. But he's dedicated to this work. He's given his all. Married, family man, and a good brother. That's right. So let's pay strict attention That's right. to everything our minister has to say. Let's bring them all with a warm round of applause. Minister Mayor. <laughs>
who have been destroyed, who exist in a destroyed state. I thank God yes, that he intervened in our affairs. Right. We thank God not just for his prophets of yesterday, right. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, Lot, Ishmael, Isaac, right, Ezekiel. We thank Allah for all his prophets yes. from yesterday. We appreciate them. But we need a man to intervene right now in our affairs. Right. Right. Come on and talk back to me. Oh, brothers and sisters, but we are blessed because God has intervened in our affairs. Right, right. And this is why we, in the nation of Islam, we celebrate. We are of great cheer. We fly up. We inspired. Yes, yes. And I'm so happy. So I thank God for his merciful intervention in our affairs. In the person of the great Mahdi that was to come. Yes, sir. The Mahdi is an Islamic name, is an Islamic terminology that denotes the human being that the great prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, he saw in the future, 1400 years ago, he saw that in the future a man would come. Yeah. Yes, sir. A man would come to guide humanity back to the straight path. Right. Huh? Though, even though God had raised prophets and messengers in the past, Jesus was here 2,000 years ago. Right. Muhammad was here 1,400 years ago. Right. Moses was here 4,000 years ago. Yes, sir. Huh? So even though God had sent guidance into the world in the absence of the man of God in the time of Satan, yes. Come on now. Satan followed up behind the prophets of God. Mm -hmm to make the people of God deviate from the right path. Right. So even though today we have Bible, Torah, and Quran, uh -huh. we have the teachings of Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. Lord. When we look at civilization, it looks like if a man of God has never walked the earth, right. because people are living in a, such a savage state, That's right. when we are killing one another for sport and play. Yes, we Talk are. back to me. Yes, right. uh, Men coming to men with lust That's in their right. heart. Mm -hmm. Women coming to women with lust in their heart. That's right. All kind of madness today. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. Lying, stealing, and murder That's is right. the order of the day. That's right. The order and the people day. in the worst condition yes, is the black man and woman That's of right. America. That's right. That's right. So the fact that whether you call yourself a Christian, Hebrew, or a Muslim, we all have deviated from the right path. Right. And society no longer reflects the will, mind, wisdom, guidance of God. Right. Come on. So God saw down the annals of time right. That's right. that a man would be necessitated to come to guide humanity back to the straight path. That's right. Uh, yes, sir. This one is called the great Mahdi. Yeah. And he has power to bring an end to the devil's civilization. He comes to sit down every tyrant right. and to set justice in the earth yes. to guide the world of Islam back to the straight path. Right. Uh, That's right. That through the world of Islam, all of humanity can be guided back to the straight path. Right. Right. Yes, sir. Oh, brothers and sisters, we are so blessed right. to be the recipients of such a great one. He came to the despised and the rejected. So we thank God for choosing the black man and woman of America. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. As the people that he would come to to raise. And this is fulfillment of the scriptures. Right. The Bible says that God will come to the bottom rail right. to make it the top rail. Right. That's right. The scripture says that God would choose the, the foolish things of the earth That's right, sir. to put the flight the wickedly wise. Right, Is that right? Yes, he said that he will make the tail the head. Right. Is that right? Yes, Is that not what the Bible teaches? Yes, sir. That yes, sir. God would choose the stone that the builders rejected. Yes, That's right. huh? That's and that this stone that the builders rejected, God will yes, come and choose and make that stone the cornerstone of the kingdom of God. Right. That means that you and I, as black people in America, we have been the bottom red. Right. We have been the tail. Right. We have been the least. Is that right? We have been the stone that the builders of civilization have rejected, but the good news is Go that God has come and he's seen you and he has chosen you. Chose a nobody. That's 
right. He told the people that was nothing. That's right. But he gave us supreme wisdom right. to cause us to come up out of our condition. Right. He chose one from among us. Sure. The despised and rejected. We thank Allah not only for coming, but we thank him for raising up from among us, huh? His messenger Messiah. Right. Huh? A Georgia-born black man. Right. Huh? One right. who has come from our struggle that God raised up with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding and wrapped them with power mm -hmm. to do the greatest job that there ever has been. That's right. That's right. And the greatest job that there ever has been is with us today. And that is to restore a people who have been totally destroyed. Huh? The greatest job that there ever has been, the writers of the scriptures, they refer to this work as the resurrection of the dead. Right. Huh? Now imagine going to a cemetery and a person who's been dead and buried for 400 years. Mm -hmm. And your job is to resurrect them and bring life back to them. As hard as that job may be. That is the exact job that is on us today because we, the black man and woman of America, we are in a position, in a condition that we are mentally and spiritually dead. Do you know who you are? We are the original people. We are the fathers of civilization. We are the descendants of the builders of the pyramids. We are the descendants of the people that invented words, invented mathematics. Is that right? Strung out, cracked out, thumbed out. Mm. Is that right? Right, right? Oppressed. We are so destroyed, we don't even know who we are. Right. So we're calling ourselves niggas. Right. We're calling ourselves coons. Mm. Or coons. Some of us are coons. Mm. Well, I should say some of our people are coons. <laughs> but, uh, well, I'm going to show you some coons today. Show us some coons. <laughs> <laughs> But you have some of our people who are self-identifying as a goon. That's right. That's what they say. A dumb person. That's right. A goblin. That's right. A thug. Yes, sir. Huh? That's right. And we're okay. so destroyed as a people that we kind of glorify these titles. Yes, we do. You, you pay homage to the thug. Yes, sir. Yes, we do. You respect the thug. Yes, we do. Huh? Yes, you respect the gangster. That's right. Huh? And then you walk around talking about respect my gangster. Mm -hmm. Huh? The hell am I gonna respect your gangster for? Right. Huh? Jeez. You telling how am I gonna respect your gangster when you dealing with a godster? Right. Huh? Right. We ain't trying to be no gangster. We know that we're a god. Right. Huh? Right. Right. You wanna be a little petty thief, little petty crook? Uh, you gonna settle for being a nigga? That's right. Man. Which is what the white man labeled you That's right. as a way to dehumanize you. Right and we walk around like that's what's up, that's my nigga. I'm a real nigga. I'm an ill nigga. Nah, you a lost brother who has lost the knowledge of himself. Right. So we thank a lot for raising up one to give us that knowledge. Right. And that one that we speak of is the little man of our Papa Blemish, the honorable Elijah Muhammad. We gotta thank a lot for that Georgia born black man. And we must become thoroughly acquainted with his teachings. This is the best book that you can get, black man and woman. It's a book written specifically for you. It's called Message to the Black Man in America. Huh? And by black man it means male and female. Because man is not male. Man is male and female working together in union. Because black man, you are not a man without a woman to take a woman to make you a man. And woman to take a man to make you a woman. We are yin and yang, we are two halves of one whole. Y'all all right? Yes sir. We thank Allah for this beautiful black man, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We thank Allah for him leaving with us today. Our champion, we have a beautiful man in front of us who is continuing the mercy and the grace of God. God loves us. You have to know that. God loves you because the greatest gift that God can give you is that he will come himself mm -hmm. to teach you. 
We say the greatest gift that you can have is that God will give you life to live. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not living, then there's nothing else matters. I'm going to give you a million dollars, but you're dead. <laughs> that won't make no sense, right? So life is the most precious gift that you can have. Next to life, the greatest gift that God can give you is to give you guidance to teach you how to live the life that he gave you that you may be successful. Because we are so great. The human being, particularly the original man and woman, we are made in the image and likeness of God. Huh? But if you don't know who you are and you are not living in accordance with your nature, then you will never be able to maximize your potential as a child of God. Huh? So many of us have life and we're walking around depressed. We're walking around down and out. Huh? We want to drown our misery in liquor. We want to drown our pain in marijuana. We want to drown our pain in heroin, in crack, in cocaine. You want to get high because the, 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 the world, the weight of the world, the stresses of the world has got you going crazy and you can't cope with reality when God created you to master creation. Mm -hmm. right. Come on now. But if you don't know who you are, if you don't have the guidance, then you'll be, you are the glory of God for walking around yeah. in the worst conditions. So in the Holy Quran it says, Allah created you in the best of men, but then you are rendered the lowest of the low, except those who believe and do good. Because it is believing in the knowledge and accepting the guidance that God has sent us that will cultivate us so that we can be what God created us to be. So God loved you by coming and giving us guidance. He loved you by raising up one from among you to teach you. And he loved us so much and he's shown us his tremendous love because he has left with us today one who is continuing to lead and teach us. He is the mercy of God. He is the grace of God. Huh? Because God already came and did his job. He raised his messenger but he gave us a second one. And that one is among us today. He is the boldest, baddest black man on the planet. The hardest working and most productive. The most consistent, the most articulate. The most God-fearing man on the planet. The preeminent leader of all black and oppressed people. Not just in America, but all over the planet. He is the undisputed, undefeated, heavyweight champion of freedom, justice, and equality. And just in case you don't know who that is, that is none other than the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And so, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord, we are peace and peace. Assalamu alaikum. Islam, sir. How you feel? Fine, right, sir. sir. All praises are due to it. I feel good. I feel great. Every day above the ground is a That's good right. day. That's right. Every day yeah. above the ground where you have a chance yeah. to be a witness to God's presence That's right. is a greater day still. That's right. So I'm yeah. honored to be among the living. Me too. And I'm honored to have an opportunity to share the life-giving teachings of That's the right. Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's so I right. want to get right to it because we have a lot to go over. My subject today is the 1619 Project. Okay. and the legacy of slavery. Now, this is very relevant because we are living in 2019. So, 2019, right, marks the, 20, the, the 400th year anniversary since the white man says that the black man came to America as a slave. So they say that on 1619, in August of 1619, the first slave ships came to Virginia. And that marked the beginning of the, the, the transatlantic slave trade and slavery in the United States of America. I mean the United States on, of America. You said it right. 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 United States. Yes, sir. That incident was very, is very interesting. So marking the 400 year, and that 400 year is significant for us to mark the 400 years. 
Because in the Bible, it talks about a people who will be enslaved in a strange land, who will be treated cruel, right, for 400 years. And it says that after that, that God would intervene, God would come, and he would judge the nation that the slaves had served. And afterwards, would those who were enslaved come out having great possessions? So 400 years is an important mile marker. It's an important time to look at the legacy of slavery. So there was a sister, Nicole Hannah Jones, who worked for the New York Times. And as this monumental date was coming up, she had the, the foresight. Uh, I say a lot guided her, right? Because a lot works through the agency of men and women. Right. But a lot guided her to, to zero in on this very significant anniversary. And so she started to do an, an article and she did a column, but it grew to be a, a whole magazine. So the New York Times, in the August edition, put out the New York Times Magazine edition. It's a whole magazine dedicated to the 1619 Project. And it looks at the uh, contributions and the impact of black people in America in these last 400 years. And it's a beautiful piece of work. I haven't finished reading the whole thing. But there's just a lot of great articles that just show our history in it. So as you see, maybe you can't read uh, what it says there uh, that I put on the, on, the, on the flyer. But it says, our founding idea of liberty and equality were false when <laughs> they were written. Black Americans fought to make them true. Right. Without this struggle, America would have no democracy at all. That's right. That's right. So it shows the importance of black people yes. in the role of America in, in so many ways. I laughed as I was reading this, thinking about the founding ideas. Come on now. And I'm, and I'm laughing because I was thinking about a, 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 a Dave Chappelle skit. All right, go ahead. Bring that skit, brother. Bring Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Yes, yes, Y'all know what I'm doing? Yes. Dave yes. Chappelle, he was doing impersonations. He said, I got a couple impersonations I want to I wanna do. He said, one of the impersonations I want to do is of the founding fathers, yes. right? Writing uh, the, the, the Constitution. Yes. He said, I, I'm not really good at it, but just bear with me. This is my impersonation of the Founding Fathers writing the Constitution. Nigga, hurry up with that. I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's how they did it. So the joke is, they didn't even write it. <laughs> they had their slave write it. If you think about it, all those high principles, man, how can you have wrote that? You know what I'm saying? Life. Liberty, huh? The pursuit of happiness, right? Huh? Right. All men are created equal, yeah. with certain inalienable rights. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. How can you write those words and you own three hundred slaves? That doesn't even make no sense. They should feel like they didn't even write that. And it may be a lot of truth to that, because white folks didn't do half the things that we think they did. Huh? They took the credit of what their slaves did, huh? and they took credit for it. They take credit for everything. They're culture vultures. Right. Huh? They don't have no culture. Uh oh, we'll come back. Uh oh, uh oh. Come on. I'm going to an end crap. I get a little excited. Huh? These people out here perpetrating the fraud like they're this superior being and everything that they have, right. they stole from That's us. Right. Right. Everything they have, right. we taught them how to bath, how to bathe, how to clean themselves, how to cook their food. We taught them religion. Huh? We taught them mathematics and science. It was black people that went up into Europe and civilized Europe when Europe was in the dark ages. But they don't tell you that in there. Uh, school system, right, right, right. Right. the public right. food system that they call a school system. Right, right. Huh? Right. We are so great as a people. Yes. 
Right. My sister Nicole Hannah Jones, she makes a, a point, and it's an excellent point, that America, really the founding of America, should not be recognized in 1776 mm -hmm. with the signing of the Declaration of Independence, which signals the birth of a new nation of America as a nation started in 1776 when they broke away from England and, and started their independence. But she, she makes the point that the beginning of America should not be marked at, 16, at, at, at um, 1776, but that the beginning of America should rightfully go to 1619. Wow. When, when blacks were first brought over here and enslaved because without black people coming to America, America would have never oh, even been a country. No, right. She makes the point that it was black people and the fact that America, the colonies, the 13 colonies, were, were practicing slavery from what they say 1555 right. to 1776. That's at least 150 years right. of free labor. free labor. So it was the free labor and the wealth that was generated by millions of black people that was forced to work for free yes, for 150 years and how cotton was king. Right. Huh? It was the capital, the resources, the money that America, that the 13 colonies were producing that even gave them the moxie to think about being independent. Right. Like what would even give you the audacity to challenge England and say, no, we straight, we're going to make our own country. Now. It was because they were making so much money. Good point. They could have fund their own uh, military. Right. They were engaging in international trade with other nations, but the king of England was taxing the uh, colonies. Right. right. And he was threatening to abolish slavery, so the issue of slavery was at the root and core of even America becoming a country in the first place. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Yes, sir. That's right. right. We own it. We built this country. Right. 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 Literally and figuratively. That's right. right. Economy, the money, the finances that was generated from free labor of black people right. Right. made America the wealthiest country on the planet. Go ahead. Right. And then, even when she did go to war with England and declare her independence, it was a black man that was the first to die right. in the Revolutionary War right. for America's independence. Right. Yet, black people were still enslaved. Right. Huh? Right. Or they could have never without us. Right. 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 Not at all. So these founding ideals of liberty and equality, it was black people that fought to make them real. Right. There wouldn't have been no equality in America if black people did not fight right. and push back to force equality. Right. Huh? Right. Right. There wouldn't have been no civil rights. Right. And now civil rights is giving way to rights for everybody. Right. Right. Huh? Oh, right. That was on the back and women's rights and no rights. rights. Right, right, right. They, have, they bring the facts that if it wasn't for black people, there wouldn't be free education in America. Go ahead. Black yeah. people that was the issue. Right, right. right. Huh? Home, right. home teachers. Right. Home teachers. Oh, we, are, we are such a great people. Go ahead and teach. And we don't get our gestures. So look, from, from this point on, and I, and I say this as often as I remember to say it, I want to say it every time I speak. Black men and women, you need to walk heavy in the earth. Right. In America, don't let nobody make you walk around here right. like you some kind of second right. or third right. Right. citizen. Because the black people are the real citizens of America. We gotta take ownership for this. This is ours, man. Right. We own this. Right. We paid the price. Right. And we're gonna stop these swindlers from tricking us. Right.
to the original man. in America that has contributed as much That's right. to the growth of America than so-called African Americans. So right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Say that man. <clears throat> now, as great as this body of work is, and I want to say this, because this is our time. Uh -huh. We are living in the time of the black man and woman's universal rise. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's a lot of good that's going on, but if you don't know the time, right, right, right that's you'll be acting like you're still losing. Yes, sir. Come on. That's right. And some of us have been losing so long we can't even recognize when we win. Right. right. There is a general awakening taking place right. from a lot of people. Right. 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 Right? There's a lot of good, but in that good, sometimes, you, you know, there's, there's some good, but sometimes there's some thing in the good that we could, you know, improve on. Yeah, yeah. We, we say the biggest room in everybody's house is the room for improvement. Yes. Is that right? right? So this is a great project, and I'm, 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 I'm promoting it all this I want you to look at it. I benefited from it. There's a yes, lot sir. of good information. Yes, sir, Mr. But a little critique on it. Not to take nothing away from the system, right? Yes, sir. But we are taught that black people didn't come to America initially in those 1619. Uh-huh. Come on now. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the beginning of our enslavement in North America began in 1555. Yes, sir. When this man drawn here called John Hopkins, uh, who was a British slave trader, slave catcher, mm -hmm. right? He brought the first slaves to America in the year 1555, and here's the kicker. It was on a slave ship named Jesus. Yes. 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 The irony of that. Yes. Now I'm not just I'm not up here engaging in theological set tripping. Right. Right. And I'm just saying that because I'm a Muslim and I'm right. you know what I'm saying I'm I'm looking a shot at the Christians. So this is history. Right. Right. White folks they would name their ships. Right. Mm -hmm. So they say Columbus came over on the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Right? They were given these names. The slave ship that John Hawkins had was the, the ship, the good ship Jesus, it was called. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says that what John Hawkins did, he tricked our people initially into coming to America. Come on now. He told them that they will receive more gold for their labor. Teach on. And he got them on the ship. But once he got them on the ship, he disappeared. And there was no one else that could speak their language. Come on, man. Come on, man. He said, so when the slave came to the shore and they was took it off, and the ship, they seen it going. He said, they, they would come down to the shore and say, look, you can have everything from this world. Just give me that ship, Jesus. Yes, Huh? And that translated into a, 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 a song in the church. Come on now. Huh? Waiting on the good ship, Jesus. Go ahead. Huh? Yes, sir. We don't even know what we're talking about. Right. Huh? Come on. Go ahead. Go ahead. So we first came in 1555. Now, that leaves a 64 year period. Yes, sir. A gap from when slavery in America actually began mm -hmm. to when they say it began. Right. 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 The white man says it was 1619, right. Right. but God said it was 1555. Right. 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 So there was 64 years. Right. He teaches us that this 64 year period was the breaking process right. uh -huh. that some of the scholars now they call a seasoning period. Yes. Right. Right. There was a period in which you take a free people right. with free people with a rich history because we're an ancient people. That's right, that's right, proud. A proud people. That's right. A warrior people. That's right. A civilized people. That's right. A royal people. That's right. Huh? That's right. It took time because you can't take a person.
person like that mm -hmm. and make them a slave. Right. 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 Huh? Right. Their nature would rebel against that. Right. Right. That's right. So they had to break the slaves. So in this 64 year period was where some of the most cruel, sadistic, mm -hmm. barbaric that's right. treatment that human beings have ever experienced yes, was conducted Say that again, in order to break the black man. Yes, it took 64 years because they had to break the initial generation right. yes, and then focus on the children coming up right. that they bred with fear in their heart. Yes, the right. our children were being bred, were being fed fear of the white man right. in the womb of their mother. Yeah. Right. They were right. made to nurse on the milk of fear. Yes, yeah. right. Because of all of these sadistic practices, and I want to talk about that because here's the people, the white man, who parades himself today as a civilized person. Right. Uh, as a, as a, as a, he's like a, a moral superior. Yes, sir. He's running around judging other nations right. about yes. human right violations. Yes, right. He's, he's talking about this nation is no good and these people are wicked. Yes, How in the hell can you fix your filthy right. mouth yes, to cast judgment on anybody? Right. Then it says, huh? 
set him on fire. Mm. So he's got this tar on, this sticky stuff, yes, sir. and feathers, both which are heavily flammable. Right. And then burn you. Mm -hmm. What kind of cruel, wicked, sadistic mind mm. would do such evil? That's not evil. And then it says, after you set them on fire, right? Beat both horses uh -huh. to pull them apart mm -hmm. in front of the remaining niggas. Yes, sir. So this is how they break fear into us. This was done to put fear. Now, what would that do to you? Mm -hmm. You sitting there watching your leader. That was your captain. Yes, sir. That was your general. Yes, sir. Like in the movie Roots. Mm -hmm. yeah. Remember the brother that was the wrestler. That's mm -hmm. right. That taught them how to be how to be a man. Right. He's slamming you. He's the toughest fighter. And you watching him get done dirty like that. Uh -huh. What they gonna make you do? Break that. And your woman gotta see this. And another thing that they would do. Uh -oh. Let me let me let me go on. It says. Now, the next step is to take a bull whip and beat mm -hmm. the remaining nigga man mm -hmm. to the point of death. Yep. Right. Yes, so you just watch your man get ripped apart, burned alive, and ripped apart. Mm -hmm. Then they take you and bull whip you when you're almost dead uh -huh. Uh -huh. to the point of death and do this in front of the female and the infants. Yes, sir. Yes, Don't sir. kill him, but put the fear of God in him. Right. For he could be useful for future breeding. Yes, sir. See, this is the slave breaking process. Mm -hmm. It wasn't these you wasn't no good to pick cotton at that point. Uh-huh. Come on. Okay. They just wanted to instill fear in your woman because by doing this, it it, it threw the woman into a frozen psychological state. When in the natural state, the woman relies on her man for protection. Right. But right. right. watching your man be murdered and the rest of the men being whipped, right. it let the woman know, the black woman know, you can't rely on the black man. Right. The black man is incapable yeah. right. of protecting you. He can't protect himself. Yeah, that's what it's done. So it made the woman not have to rely on the man. And this is really the origins of all of this woman saying, well, I don't need a man. Uh -huh. I don't need a man, but I'm independent. Uh -huh. The white man wanted you to be independent. Because okay. God did not create you independent. Right. Uh -huh. God created you codependent. Uh -huh. right. We are dependent on each other. Right. They done reversed it. Now you so independent, you don't want a man for nothing. Now you turn it on yourself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, the, and the black man has been uh, emasculated so much yeah. that now we don't even know how to be a man. Right. So it says we can't be a man. Now they got you turning to try to be a woman. Uh -huh. But you can never be a woman, black man. Right. It don't matter how much you try. Right. Right. You're not going to be a woman. Right. right. This is all part of a bigger plan of population control. Yes, sir. But back then, it was about producing a slave. Right. One of the other things that they did for the rebellious ones, they had this practice which was called buck breaking, mm -hmm. where they would take the biggest, strongest man and sodomize him mm -hmm. in front of his. Oh, yes. Women and children. Mm -hmm. See, because a warrior, some of the warriors, they won't care. We'll take that whip, but I'm still not going to, you kill my man, you have to kill me. I ain't, I ain't going out like that. We're yes, going to fight to the death. Uh -huh. But that's one thing that may give a man pause. Uh -huh. When you see another man running up in you and turning you into a woman, mm -hmm. we might have been like, yo, who's ready to fight? But, uh, nah, we ain't doing that. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, pretty cool. Keep that right, right. All right. Come on. Yep. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I'll pick the car in. Right. Stay, no stay the hell away from me. <laughs> no that, that, that'll, put, that'll, that'll put fear. You know what I mean? Uh, you gotta be raped in front of your woman. How can that? Mm. 
Man, you imagine the mental anguish? Right, right. You can't even be like a man. No. How you gonna, you can't even feel like a man no more. That's right, right. right. that's true. Here this white man on rape you in front of your woman. That's right. true. Violate, violate. Violate. So all the brothers seeing that, mm -hmm. they were all about that. No, sir. I'm straight. Right. Yep. These were all of the dirty tricks right. that they did right. to break it. Now, most of this treatment took place in the Caribbean. Come on. Because there was a triangular trade group uh -huh. where the slaves, where the, not the slaves, we got to get the language right. Right? Don't, let's not refer to our people as slaves. They were enslaved. Uh -huh. Because slavery is a condition. Right. Yeah. Right. When they say the slave, it's almost like we were slaves. No, we were not slaves. We were free, intelligent, royal, huh? Right. Spiritual, right. Right. huh? Intelligent people right. that were captured and enslaved. Enslaved. Good point. Huh? Good point. Good. So they kidnapped our people in Africa. Come on. But one of the first stops on the triangular trade route was in the Caribbean. Come on. Teach the history. Right. Where they dropped off. Many blacks, matter of fact, there's more Africans that went to South America and Central America than actually came to the mainland of America. That's right. Huh? Yeah. In Brazil, Brazil is the country that has the largest number of Africans outside of the continent of Africa. That's right. That's right. Huh? Yeah. They would sell slaves in the Caribbean, pick up uh, sugar cane. Come on. That they would take and bring to the south, and they would transfer that sugar cane into rum, drop off some more slaves that they captured from the Caribbean. They would take the broken slaves. Come on now. Big huh? Come on. The docile ones. Go ahead. And that's the ones that they would bring over here. Because remember what we had said? Yep. The, ori the original ones, they're not, they're only good for, for breathing. Uh huh. Right? Yes, sir. You ain't got a docile state. You got to get a broken one. Mm -hmm. And this is why in the Caribbean, that's why our people in the Caribbean, we, we some hot-headed people down there. Mm -hmm. Come on now. We yeah. some rebellious, fiery. Yeah. Ain't, they, ain't they fiery people? Yes. yes. Come on, man. You know, you know our Jamaican family. Yes. Come on now. You, you, you know, you know our, our, our Haitian family. Yes. yes. You know our, our Puerto Rican and Cuban family. Go ahead. They hot-headed, right? They hot-tempered. Right. Right. Fiery. That's true. Right. That's, true. Right. that's true. Come on. <laughs> That's right, bro. Uh -huh. You teach it, you teach it. Go ahead. They will leave the rebellion on the dead. Mm -hmm. You may need a little more buck breaking. Yes, sir. Uh, That's you right. may need a little bit more of something. That's right. But the, but the one that they effectively broke, they brought here. Right. So that was the 64 year period. Now, this is very important. Very important. Because as we look, at the trade routes, right? We see how again, look at all this, there was flood in South America with black people. There are tons of black people outside of the United States. And this is important because right now there's, like I said, we're winning. We're living in our time. There's a universal awakening taking place. Right? 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 And we've been so used to losing that we can't recognize when we winning. Right, that's right. right. So now there's a whole thing because a lot of so-called Latinos, right, we use the word so-called because you are not a Latino. That's right. You are not a right. You are not a European. You are not Spanish. Our Puerto Rican family, you are not Spanish. Our Dominican family, you are not Spanish. Our Cuban family, you are not Spanish. You were enslaved by the Spanish. You are an original people that were kidnapped, that was right. robbed, that was enslaved. Right. And you were robbed of your language and given the language of your conqueror. Right. But today, without the knowledge of ourselves, we embrace like we're Spanish That's people. Right. Right. But we're Latino people. That's right. That's right. Hell no, you ain't from there. Right. That was your slave master. That's right. That's right. But today, in the general awakening, right. you have Latinos that are, that are now coming out and saying, yeah, we're black. Right. We know we're black. Right. There was a whole controversy right. about right. cultural appropriation. Right. right. When it was a, a, a Latino actor who used the N-word, right. said nigga, she was singing a Laura Neal song. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You know, she got to that point where it says, frontin' niggas give me heebie jeebie. She was singing a song, right, but she right. was screaming it. But because she was Latino, she got all kind of flack mm -hmm. for using the word. Come on, None now. of us should use the word. Right, 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 right. But she was receiving flack as if though as a Latino, you're not black, you can't use the word. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And she was like, hold on, but I'm black. Like, that's right, right, right. 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 There she is. That's right. And we all confused. All three all of that. Man, you, your Latino family, that's your family. Yes, they are. Yeah. That's right. That's they black. That's they right. They just had a different slave master. That's right. The only thing different between a Puerto Rican and a so called African American is a boat stop. Boat stop. That's it. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Not, right, but some folks are taking this 
to the extreme and you know is is really developing a anti uh -huh. you know anti other than adults uh, yeah. anyone that's not adults right uh -huh. so you have some that are opposing Mexican or immigration come on now and they and they're perpetuating the mythology and the and the and the Republican talking point and really the racist talking point yeah. right that Mexicans are coming over here and stealing jobs from black people. You know, that's demeaning as to say that, that the only jobs black people can get today are the jobs that Mexicans are coming over here for, really? Yes, sir. And you know the certain jobs, you don't even want those jobs. Right. Right. You don't want to talk back to me. That's right. Huh? That's right. You ain't trying to get in the cotton field. You ain't trying to pick no kind anymore. That's right. You ain't trying to pick no grapes. Come on and talk back to me. Right. You ain't trying to do no farm work. Right. Right. Huh? Right. This certain job, you, man, some of it, you don't even want to work at McDonald's no more. Right. Right. Huh? Yes, sir. He said, we be on that. Right. And I get it, you should be. You've been here for 400 years. We the real Americans. Right? Right. right. Yeah. Make that point. That's the mythology. So it's setting up division. Yes, between our people. Good. Right on it. Now we have to realize that the real enemy is racism and white supremacy. Go ahead. Right. Right. right? So we should be happy to see other people of color, black people, coming to America right. because the more of us that is there, then we become the majority here. Right. Right. And we can now take control of all the seats of power, right. change the laws, and finally bring some real right. equality to everybody. Right. Right. Huh? But the Republicans, Trump supporters, they want to make America great again, which is a euphemism for making America white again. Come on, come on, come on. And I feel that there's a part of the adults movement that's feeding into that. It is dividing us. And we're following into the Willie Lynch playbook. Right, huh? right. Because that was the playbook was divide and conquer. Right. That's how the white man been able to rule us in the first place. So why are we sitting here fighting and now we're gonna position ourselves, we're gonna, we're gonna um, fight against, or not fight, but make a distinction between us and other blacks. First of all, most blacks, well, let's, 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 let's look at this. That terminology is problematic. Because, so you got a Haitian American. Aren't they adults? Yes. Because there was slavery in Haiti, you know that, right? Go ahead. There was slavery in the Caribbean, you do know that, right? Right, right. So now they're in America and they are American citizens. That's correct. And they are also descendants of slavery. That's right. So if we go strictly by the the the, 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 the jargon here or the acronym, right. right, then they will classify as being adults. Right, right. Come on and talk back to me. Right, right. Huh? right. Because slavery was all in the Caribbean. Right. Now I can say this, speaking on behalf of my tribe, if you will, I'm Puerto Rican. Huh? Well, Puerto Ricans are uh, Puerto Rico is a territory in the United States. It has been one since uh, 1889 or 98. Huh? So we are naturally we are Americans. And we are also descendants from slavery. So are we dividing us based on that? There's some that are arguing that we're black spot for civil rights, and you know now everybody got it. So are you suggesting that other blacks who come to this country shouldn't be treated equally? I mean, like, where, where are we going with this? Right. See, it's just positioning our, ourselves to fight for the crumbs falling from the white man's table as opposed to us coming together and uniting and if we united and pulled our resources, we could build our own damn table and have our own meal. They're playing into the Willie Lynch card. Willie Lynch says, I have a foolproof method for controlling your black slaves. And I guarantee every one of you that if you install correctly, it will control the slaves for at least 300 years. Go ahead. 
Now this was said in 1712. Uh -huh. Huh? Now listen, he said, who control your slaves for 300 years. He said, my method is simple. Go ahead. And any member of your family or your overseer can use it. I have outlined a number of differences among the slaves. And I take these differences and I make them bigger. I use fear, distrust, and envy for control purposes. So when we look at the adverse movement, we're looking at fear, right? They come in to take our jobs, right? right? Envy, right. right? Because they got the jobs that we think belong to us. Come on now. Right. Huh? Mm -hmm. And distrust. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yep. They use fear, envy, and distrust right. for control purposes by dividing us against each other. Right. Yes, sir. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, sir. Yes. He goes on to say, these methods have worked on my mom's plantations in the West Indies. Where was these modest plantations? In the West, West, West Indies. Indies. These methods have worked on my modest plantations in the West Indies. Black man, the West Indian brother is your brother. That's uh -huh. right. They was enslaved just like the African American was enslaved. There was plantations there. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Why are we looking at each other like we different? Come on, now. Huh? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. He says, and it will work throughout the South as well. Take these simple little lists of differences and think about them. On top of my list is age, mm -hmm. but it's there only because it starts with an A. Right. The second is color or shade. Come on, come on. There is intelligence, size, sex, yes, size of plantation, come on. status on the plantation, come on. attitude of owners, whether the slave lives in the valley or on the hill. Right. East, west, north, or south. Whether they have fine hair or coarse hair. That's huh? us. That's us. Or, now I gotta stop there. Because they talked about hue, color, complexion. Uh -huh. So we look at some of us are lighter than others. Yes, sir. So we got this issue with colorism going on. Huh? I'm team dark skin. Come on. I'm team light skin. Right. Yeah. We have our young people. This is foolishness. Yeah. This is what Willie Lynch instituted, and here we are over 300 years. Go ahead. Yeah. And our people are still battling the issue of colorism. Right. Huh? Right. So you, you battle because of colorism, because of texture of hair. Go ahead. Huh? Yeah. Some of your people who are black have fine have, have straight hair. Uh -huh. But the black. Yes, Come on sir. now. Yep. Huh? But, so their hair is a little straight. Come on now. Then you don't classify them as being black like you. We think we're different. Come on. Uh -huh. This was all Willie Lynch. Fine hair, coarse hair. Or if he's tall or short. Go ahead. Now that you have a list of differences, I shall give you a outline of action. But before that, I shall assure you that distrust is stronger than trust. Uh -huh. And envy is stronger than adulation, yeah. respect, or admiration. Mm -hmm. This is what the slaves were taught. Mm -hmm. And this is what Willie Lynch taught on his plantation. He said the black slaves, after receiving this indoctrination, so carry on and will become self-refueling mm -hmm. and self-generating for hundreds of years, maybe thousands. Go ahead. Yes, sir. So 1712 brought us all the way to 1912. That was the 300 years. And we're still dealing with it. So it looked like if we don't correct this, we'll still be dealing with this division. Yes, sir. For years to come. Yes, sir. Maybe thousands, but it's not gonna happen. Because God has intervened. Uh -huh. So we're not going to let it happen because today we have knowledge itself. All the praise of the future of We should be following the night of the knowledge of God's mind. Yes, sir. Now he says to remind us, he said, don't forget, you must pit the old black male versus the young black male and the young black male against the old black male. You must use the dark skinned slave versus the light skinned slave and the light-skinned slave versus the dark-skinned slave. 
You must use the female versus the male, and the male versus the female. You must also have white servants and overseers distrust all blacks. But it's necessary that your slaves trust and defend only us. They must love, respect, and trust only us. Gentlemen, these kites or this kit are the keys to control. Use them. Have your wives and children use them. Never miss an opportunity if used intensely for one year. The slaves themselves will remain perpetually distrustful. Huh? Man, let's get Willie Mitch a hand, man. He knew what he was talking about. But hey, look, man. Tell the truth, even if it's against the devil. Is that right? Sister Dora said, you get one clap. He was on it. He was on it. This has become self-refuting. So now, as we go into looking at this Adams movement, see, they suspect with me because the founder, one of the founders, Yvette Connell, mm -hmm. this is the same sister that a few years ago came out against the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to show this clip. I don't think I'm going to have time to show the whole thing. But she was saying some foul things yes. about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Let's see what she has to say. <laughs> Black world family, breaking brown family, and I just want to say that one of the people that I rarely, 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 um, if ever, uh, criticize is, is, is Minister Louis Farrakhan. And there is a reason for that. I rarely criticize Farrakhan because he has so many adherents who are so, you know, sort of so militantly in his corner that it's, it's really, as far as I'm concerned, mostly a losing battle because of no matter what you say, you know, a, a, a nation of Islam, you know, loving person who loves Farrakhan isn't really, isn't really going to change their minds. But I, I saw something that came across my Facebook feed uh, earlier today, early last night, as a matter of fact, and I, and I had to say something. I mean, I hear Farrakhan has this justice or else thing going on, I guess, as, as a marketing ploy to sort of, to sort of sell, you know, um, Million, Man Mar Million Man March Part 2. And let me just say something to black people. You know, I, I understand that one of the only things that, that this country, that, that, that the Western uh, dominating forces respect is, is wealth and violence. That's what we are. Those are the two valuable products of wealth and violence. I get that. But let me just say, when you start telling black people justice or else, you're really putting black people in a lot of danger. When you think of the National Guard, the military, the militia, these oath keepers, everyone else, you think about what are we, 13 percent of the population? What I am saying is that this, this, this sort of, this thing Farrakhan is doing in the sense of we need 10,000 uh, men who, who, rather, who, you know, who, who would rather be dead than they continue to see their babies in the streets or whatever, whatever. I'm telling you, this is, this is some of the most potentially damaging uh, race war encouraging stuff I've seen in a while. And what I'm saying is that you know, if you start a race war, uh, first of all, black people, we're going to lose. You know, there is no way around it. This is, this is, and let's be honest, even, even with, with what's happening, uh, black people in America are probably better off than black people in a lot of other countries. Right, right there. Right. So you get the point. Right. Right. Now, is this, is this the type of person you want leading you? No. no. How can you come out your mouth? Right, and it, it, it gets worse, but time is on, so I, I don't want to. We got, I gotta try to land this plane. But she goes on to mock the minister, she mocks the million man march as mm -hmm. us just going there to you know, she trivializes it. Uh -huh. The greatest event, right? The million man march, man, was the greatest event since Moses let the Israelites out of Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> I read the last a couple weeks ago yeah, about the million man mind. You gotta go go on my YouTube page and check it out. Because I could talk for hours yeah. on the accomplishments of the million man mind. Who would uh, belittle that? Uh -huh. 
right? That two make two million black men come out together. Come on, come on, man. For atonement, reconciliation, and responsibility come on. Come on. to commit themselves to go back to their communities come on. and make them safe and decent places. That's you right. gonna criticize that? Now here we are on the heels of Trayvon Martin, on the uh -huh. heels of Freddie Gray, on the heels of, of Eric Garner, on the heels of all these killings that was taking place, and the minister is fed up and he says we're going to march uh, we going to Washington on the 20th anniversary of the greatest event that happened in our lifetime. Yes, sir. He don't he shouldn't need and he doesn't need no mocking employee. Huh? To mock at the million man march. Right, right. That was the greatest thing that we accomplished and they set the tone for everything that it took place in America. So for 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 this sister to sit there and to disparage, and as she says, and he he's first of all, the minister wasn't calling us there to stop no race war. Right, right, right. That's right, right. 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 That's not what he was talking about. But she said, he's sitting in his mansion in Hyde Park in Chicago. You know, he ain't going to be on the front line. Watch your mouth. Right. 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 
and brothers kicked the French's backside. Right. Oh, they defeated Napoleon's army. Right. Huh? Come on, come on. They shook Napoleon so bad right. that he took all the French's stuff out of the new territory. Yes, sir. Huh? Yeah. So the Louisiana Purchase come on, man. was an acquisition of the territory of Louisiana by the United States from the France, from France in 1803 in return for $15 million. Look at this. They bought that whole thing for $15 million. Yes, sir. You can't buy one skyscraper downtown for one, for $15 million. You hear me? Yes, sir. They got this whole section of the country because our Haitian family kicked the French's backside. Huh? They said they got this for $15 million or approximately $18 per square mile. Man, I wish I could get a square mile for $18. Huh? The United States uh, nominally acquired a total of 828 square miles which is 530 million acres of land. Come on, come on. Mm -hmm. However, France only controlled a small fraction of this area, mm -hmm. with most of it settled by Native Americans. Mm -hmm. For the majority of the area, what the United States bought was the preemptive right mm -hmm. to obtain mm -hmm. Native American lands come on now. by treaty or by conquest, mm -hmm. yep. to the exclusion of other colonies. Now these white folks are a uh, they're a mess. Right. Huh? Right. How you gonna buy land that don't the French sold them land that they don't even own? There was Native Americans all up here. Right. And when America bought it, they began a process of massacring genocide. Go ahead, go ahead. To clean uh, clear this area so that they can settle it. Yeah. And at that time America didn't even have this. This was all Mexico. Huh? So the United States was this part right here. So when the Adams movement, you coming out and you want to, some of them are anti-Indian. Come on now. Anti-Native American. Right. Anti-Mexican. And then you talking about you concerned with Mexicans coming and immigration. Man, they coming back to their natural homeland. Right. What are you talking about? Right. right. Uh, come on, come on. We'd be better off partnering and allying. Right. With our natural brothers. Right. Yeah. Come on. But this is what happens when you follow those that are misguided. Go ahead. Right. Right. If you yeah, were just to go by those, we wouldn't have Malcolm X. Come on, come on. Right. Because his brother was from Grenada. Yes, come on. Right. We wouldn't have Dr. Yosef Ben Yakin. Come on, right. 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 Who was a, one of the leading Afrocentric scholars. That's right. Oh, 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 guess what? He was Puerto Rican. That's right. That's yeah. my tribe. Yeah. So you want to classify in your eyes? And last but not least, we wouldn't have this beautiful black man. Her name is Cynthia Erivo. 
She's a Nigerian born oh, come on, actor. Man. Come on, man. Huh? And so she, so they said, why, how are you going to have a black person that's not at those, right, right, right. play the role of an iconic African-American hero? Right. Why couldn't a, a, an actor's person play? And hey, look, that's a valid question. That's a valid question. One of my sisters could have got that guap, could have got that money, could have got that role, that recognition. I wouldn't be mad about that. But hell, that don't raise it to the level that you want to boycott a movie. Come on, right. Right. Huh? That's right. right. Make more movies. Damn. Yeah, make more movies. Right. That's it. So they said, well, she's Nigerian. So in Nigeria, you got the Igbo, the Dahlia, and the Ohu. So it was a class system. So they questioning, well, what kind of Nigerian was you? Oh, was you a Dahlia, which is a freeborn? Or was you part of the Osu or the Ohu, which was the servant class? So now if she was part of the Dali, which was the freeborn Nigerians, who some of them owned slaves allegedly, right? Then they're using that as a means to say, well, we ain't rocking with that. Right. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. They're also mad because they say that one of the main villains, and by the way, these folks that are criticizing it, they didn't even see the movie. Yes, sir. Right, so they didn't see it, but they, they I guess, read about it and seen something. But they're saying that the, the lead uh, villain is a black man named Big Along. Mm -hmm. And they have, a, they have a legitimate argument here. I'm not, you know, I'm not, see, we got to be nuanced. Come on, now. Okay. There's truth in what they're saying and in part of what they're saying, because Big Along was a fictitious character. There was no real historical big along. Right. Uh -huh. So they depict this black man who is this brute and he's going around, he's a slave catcher and he's he's hired to capture Harriet Tubman. And he's calling her a bee and he's a vicious dude. Mm -hmm. I agree, why would you put that in there? Come on now. Huh? Now they took creative license to do that. I disagree, they should have did that. Right. That was bad. Right. However, However, come on. Huh? Uh, Let's not act like there has not always been black oh. sellout in turncoats, right. right? That when our people was going for freedom, that there was some of our own people yeah. that actually turned the freedom right. fighters. And come on, talk that's that to me. Right. Huh? That's right. Okay. Yeah. 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 So y'all don't on that one. Yeah. Huh? Y'all don't on that one. We got some of them niggas around. Paternal role, huh? 
to the degree that he could. There was another slave catcher that was working with Big Along that turned on him mm. and became an ally That's and was right. helping Harriet Tubman get away. That was a positive role. Uh -huh. but there was a rich black man who was uh, one of the uh, abolitionists uh, who was funding her movement to go down and free other black people. Yes. So there were several positive roles that black men played in the movie, but you want to zero in uh -huh. on the one negative character yes, sir. and use that as a pretext to call for a ban or a boycott of a, of, a, of a movie about a black icon. Yep. I think it's just misguided. Uh -huh. huh? See, we have to learn, brothers and sisters, how to eat the fish and spit out the bone. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We have to be critical thinkers. If, right. Wherever you go, right. even right here, right now, what I'm telling you, I'm not telling you, don't take everything I'm saying on face value. Right? Make me go face. Make me go face. <laughs> 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 All right. It's a little levity. But no, we don't want you to take nothing off face value. That's right, that's right. Right? We want you to go back and do your research. Check it out. Check it out. Right? And you gotta be able to decipher what's good and what's not. You gotta learn how to eat the fish and spit out the bones. But at a time where we are winning in our universal rise, I think it's misguided to not promote a movie that's doing that that's telling that story. Now you may say, well yeah, that's easy for you to say, well no, we did it. Mm -hmm. Spike Lee put out the movie Malcolm X. Right, right. And we knew that there was misrepresenting the honorable yeah. Muhammad. That's right. right. And you were how many of y'all seen the the Malcolm X movie? Come on, raise your hands. Right? You know that dude, uh there wasn't no such thing as a brother Payne right. who was in prison giving Malcolm nutmeg and making him a teacher of Islam. That character never existed. That's right. Huh? Never. Right. So if they took some creative licensing, they made the Honorable Elijah Muhammad look, uh, they didn't depict him in a good way. That's huh? Right. But the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan did call for a boycott of Malcolm X. Right. Matter of fact, when Malcolm X came out, that's why we went to go see it. We was deep up in that piece. We wanted to make our presence known and felt. How many of y'all were part of that movie expedition when we went? Yeah, we had a good time. We went to see Malcolm X. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan gave us good guidance. He said it's not what's in the movie. It's what we do with the what we do with what is in the movie. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Good point. It creates conversation and dialogue. And even though it may not be a perfect movie, uh, but at least we're talking about our sister Harriet Tubman. Right. And maybe that's that would inspire the next generation. Somebody else could come behind that and do another one and correct the wrong and tell the real story. Yeah, how many movies you see come out every year about, about uh, uh, the Holocaust, about Hitler, about the Jews? Come on and talk back to me. Every year they got a movie. You ever hear the Jews talking about we're going to boycott Simmons list? Because they, they showed them having black leather shoes and we had brown leather shoes. <laughs> That's how silly we sound. Right. Right? They just pick anything. Oh, that wasn't, we didn't wear uh, silver, we wore gold. That, that was boycott the movie. Yeah. Or uh, the, that actor was not a Jewish actor. You had an American actor playing the role of a Jew. We all boycott the movie. Yeah. yeah. Silly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'll never boycott. They should go see that. And whatever they miss, we got another one coming after that to pick up those pieces. Right. And we got another one coming up after that, right? Yep. right. We're the only ones that like to cannibalize on each other. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Damn, explain my battery running low on my computer. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, All right. this one of the point that uh, they, boy they, they call for the boycott, and this point has more relevancy to it. And Focus Film is a subsidiary of Universal, which is a subsidiary of Comcast. Mm -hmm. And our brother Baron I. Allen, who is a Baron Allen, Allen. Baron Allen, Baron Allen. is a black billionaire. Who is engaged in a lawsuit with Comcast? They're going in, I think it's on the 13th, on November 13th. Yes, sir. 
and Comcast is 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 trying to well the Supreme Court, Donald Trump Supreme Court, actually want to reverse the uh, the first civil rights um, bill yes. that was passed from 1866 right. that gives thank you that gives black people and all people the uh, the right to sue uh -huh. yes. for racial discrimination. Right, right. right. Listen, listen. So on November the 13th, the Supreme Court has took it on the case from Comcast, uh -huh. right, that can reverse our civil rights back to 1865. Yes, sir. Wow. Where you can be fired with impunity and you cannot sue. That is an important case. Sure not. Right? right? Mm -hmm. But Comcast is only a part owner of Universal Films. Come on, come on, come on. And, and so though we should take a stand, why not just call for a boycott of Comcast altogether? Right, right, right. right. Huh? Why not, why not just, why you want to boycott Harriet Tubman, but you ain't got the testicular fortitude come on, right. to call black people not to boycott a black movie. Why not boycott the whole damn uh, uh, Comcast, the industry, the business that's behind it? This is why we need the guidance right. of God through the messenger, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, sir. In closing, in our student enrollment, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad asked the question, who is the original yeah. man? Come on, come on. And he says that the original man is the Asiatic black man, come on. the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe. Come on, right. We can stop with the Asiatic black man. Yeah. Meaning that we are the original people from the planet. The whole planet at one time was called Asia. Come on, right? So he, he took us from a nationalistic point of view and he gave us a universal standard. Black people, you got family all over the planet. Right. In the supreme wisdom lessons. Lesson number one, question number six, he asks the question, why does the devil call our people African? Right. And he says to make our people of North America believe that the people on that continent are the only people that they have. Come on. And that they are all savage. Yes, he, the devil, bought a trading post in the jungle of that continent. The original people live on this continent, and they are the ones who stray away from civilization Come on. and are living a jungle life. The original people call this continent Asia, but the devils call it Africa to try to divide them. He wants us to think that we are all different. Right? See, it's the devil that wants us to think that we're different. See, the guidance of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is to show us that you are a universal people. And once you grow into a universal perspective, you are not just an American Negro. You are not just an African American. But you are part of the original people who are the overwhelming majority of the people on the planet Earth. We are the majority of the of the original nation in the wilderness of North America okay. and all over the planet Earth. See, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is a man that was not just concerned with some, but the whole. Okay. So he asked, what is the population of the original people in America and all over the planet Earth? Yes. Because we are connected. He says that the population of the original nation in the wilderness of North America is 17 million. Come on. With the two million Indians making it 19 million, and all over the planet Earth, it's four billion, 400 million. So the question is not only why he's asking the question or, or what, but why did he ask the question? He's elevating our moral standing to show us that we are universal people. So including the original people, he says, along with the two million Indians, see the Indians are original people. Yes, sir. Right. Huh? Yes, sir. So when you look at the original Indians, they were black people. Come on, huh? yes, Look at these are dark skinned people. Right. Yes, but they got straight hair, but they are our brothers. Yes, right. huh? on, That's our family. They are black people. They are original people. On, man. So we should be concerned with them too. Right. Is that right? Yes, sir. So when we look at these maps, right, and we look that black people was, all this was populated by 
not original indigenous people. Africans were brought over. All of this, Louisiana Purchase was Native Americans here. You have, this was owned by Mexico, but the Mexicans, uh -huh. the Mexicans are only the descendants of the Olmec people. Come on, man. So the original Mexicans are black as well. Yes, sir. Huh? Look at that. These are the original Mexicans. That's right. In Olmec. Come on, man. A member of a prehistoric people yes. inhabiting the coast of Veracruz and Western Tabasco on the Gulf of Mexico. Come on. Huh? Yes, sir. They were there from 12,400 BC who established what was probably the first Mesoamerican civilization. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. So this is all ours. This is all our people. Right. So how are we going to begrudge our Mexican family? Huh? Because they may be a little bit, they are lighter than us. Right. They got straight here. Yes, sir. But they are descendants of the original people. Just like we are, y'all all right? Yes, sir. You know what Mr. Louis Farrakhan said to us when he did this speech? Just this year, the minister has been working so hard. That's right. right. And these, these right. words were echoing in my head Come on, man. as I was putting this. And, I, and when I went and, and dug it up, this was a speech that he just delivered in June, just a couple months ago. Come on, man. It seemed like it was years ago, but it was just a couple months ago. Right. When he spoke at in Cobra, right? Yes, he says, we have to be for all or be for nothing at all. Because we will always be behind until and unless we can act and think for the whole of our people. And if reparation does not repair our broken minds, our corrupt souls, and bring us a new again, we can say we're engaged in reparations masturbation. I'm not being, I'm not trying to be vulgar, but our expressions are vulgar if it's only, if it only is for a few. Yep. We all have to be made anew. Yes, sir. So this is the guidance yep. from God. Yep. Through his back. Look at this wisdom, brother. We gotta thank God, brothers and sisters, we gotta thank Allah Come on, sir. for this unparalleled wisdom and guidance. Right. from God through his man in our midst right. today, the Honorable right. Minister Louis Farrakhan. Right. All praises of you to our God. Right. You know what the young mama says in the economic blueprint? He said the black man in America faces a serious economic problem today right. and the white race Christians cannot solve it. Come on. You, the so-called American Negro, with the help of Allah can solve your own problems. Yes, sir. The truth must be recognized by the black man. Come on. He himself has assisted greatly in creating this serious problem of unemployment, insecurity, and lack. Before the black man can begin to gain economic security, he must be awakened from the dead and gain knowledge, understanding, and wisdom which will enable him to Follow my teachings. Right. See, God has already come yes, sir. and given to us a proven and tried and tested methodology already. for the salvation of the black nation. That's right, that's right. But the reason why we are still suffering is because we have collectively rejected right. the message and the teachings and the guidance right. of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Right. But those of us that have accepted it, we are flourishing, we are thriving, we are building, we are growing, we are being successful in the midst of our open enemies. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says Islam, and only Islam, Come on. will point the way out of the entanglement of want in the midst of plenty. Now think about that. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. That's heavy. Come on, come on. We are caught in an entanglement of want mm. in the midst of plenty. Wait, uh -huh. huh? Why are we suffering in America in the midst of plenty? Because we lack knowledge of self. Wait, yes, sir. Right. For the followers of Islam, the true religion of the black nation, know thyself and be yourself. Yes, Islam makes a true brother to brother. If this be true, how can a believer Muslim be a true brother to another believer and boycott his brother mm -hmm. and support the enemy? Come on. Come on. The believers in truth 
Islam must stop looking up to the white race for justice and take the following steps to correct the problem. Y'all ready? Right. He says, we have to acknowledge and recognize that you are members of the Creator's nation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And act accordingly. Right. You are not Negroes. No. You are members of the Creator's nation. Come on. This action in the name of Allah requires you as a Muslim to set an example for the lost found. Yeah. Your brothers in the wilderness in North America. Yes, this requires action and deeds, not words and lip service. Right. Huh? Right. So to do this, it requires actions and deeds, not words and lip service. We have an actual action plan. Huh? We have a system, a methodology that we can follow to get us where we need to go. Right. Last but not least, he says, the following blueprint shows the way. Number one, we must recognize the necessity for unity and group operation. Right. Yes, huh? Sir. Yes, sir. He said, pool your resources, physically as well as financially. That's right. Stop wanting criticism of everything that is black-owned and operated. Yes, sir. Wanting means merciless, inhumane, or cruel. We are so cruel in the way that we criticize our own. Yeah, no, no, no. We give the white man a pass all day, every day. Oh, huh? right. oh, the black man can't have a margin of error. So you know, Mr. Farrakhan called for a million man march. You gonna criticize that? Uh -huh. See, that's that wanton criticism. Yeah. Huh? Yes, it's sir. malicious. Yes, sir. It's being without checks and limitations. We gotta stop wanton criticism of everything that is black owned and black operated. Keep in mind that jealousy destroys from within. Right. And last but not least, point number five, observe the operations of the white man. He is successful. He makes no excuses for his failures. That's right. He works hard in a collective manner. Listen. Huh? You do the same. Mm. Let's give it up for the honorable <laughs> guy. So we got to get out of this entanglement of want in the midst of plenty. Let us unite. Let us come together. Let us pull our resources and let us unite and do for ourselves. Thank you for listening. I go and I open up with the reading words of peace and paradise. Salam alaikum.